Okay, we are live and we will get started at 12 in about four minutes. And there is about a 20 second delay, so. Um, sure, for the, for the live stream. For YouTube. Mm -hmm. Hi, Donna. Okay, we are live. And we will get started at 12 and about. There we go. All righty. So yeah, we've got um, four viewers so far and we're gonna wait until noon before we get started. But if you can hear me, go ahead and say hi in the chat box so we know you're there. I see Donna did, that's great. So what's the weather like there today, Justin? Um, a little cooler than it has yeah. been. You know, we had a, a stretch of a few days of just like gorgeous, amazing weather. Where are you exactly? So down in Connecticut in Weathersfield, okay. which is right south of Hartford. Oh, okay. Yeah, but it, it's not raining or anything, which is good. What's but, the temperature? Um, I think it's in the 50s. Maybe. Oh, wow. Low 50s. Yeah, we're in the, I think, 80s. Kind of an overcast oh, yeah. day, but <laughs> we've been doing that for a while. I think we got up to the 90s the other day. Oh, and Ruby's here. Hi, Ruby. Okay. I'm so excited that we are getting to talk about this today. I get a lot of questions about it. And um, so this will Well, be I do think that it really is entering the mainstream a lot more like a lot of people that I just randomly bump into are like oh yeah like I kind of heard about that or you know my friend was talking about that or something you know right yeah, yeah. and I know that they some of them do like a an annual some of the tappers right they get together and do like an annual summit and I think that just yep. finished yeah yep. so, the World tapping summit yeah my yeah. mentor uh does that every year I wondered if she was on that because yeah. I, I her name is familiar I almost wonder if the teacher who I worked under I think she may have worked with her. Um, so, so, cause she's you know, trained a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. Cause her name was certainly familiar when you mentioned it. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Well, we've got one more minute here and then we'll get going. Yeah. I think she's been doing it for like 20 years, maybe, maybe more, but wow. a long time. So she's done a lot of training. So yeah. When I'm you, very lucky that I found her as my mentor. Yeah, no kidding. So you, but you, did you seek other trainers first or did you just find her first? You just... I, I did training with a few different people. Um, and I trained with some people that were kind of like being supervised by her, sort of like they were kind of trainers under her. Mm -hmm. um, and she like popped on at the end. And, um, and then I like saw some of her YouTube stuff and it was, it was fascinating. So I kind of like, I'm like, I have to, I need to find out more. I need to figure out what's going on here. Because she seemed, she seemed very talented. And I kind of wanted to, I wanted to learn, like, can I learn that stuff too? You know, because yeah. she gets amazing results. So I want to, if I can, I'd like to, I'd like to get those too. That is so neat. I love the way we're just guided to certain people, you know. It is really nice. Yeah. If we, if we let ourselves be. <laughs> yes. Which sometimes we don't. Sometimes yes, we don't. it happens. Um, well, it is 12 o'clock, so um, we will get started then. Just make sure we've got all the streaming going. And hi to everybody that's out there. We'd love it if you could say hi in the chat box if you're able, just so we know you're there. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Glad to be here. Yes, welcome everybody. This is another episode of Devin's Chat. Today, my guest is Justin Speller. He is a certified um, emotional freedom technique practitioner. So I created Devin's Chat because when I was going through my own journey and learning about different types of modalities out there for healing and communication, I found that I would be fearful of reaching out to certain people or certain teachers, and I wouldn't always feel comfortable trusting. And so what I'm hoping with these Devin's chats is that I can introduce you to people that I have worked with personally, that I trust, and I have had transformations with, 
when I'm going through my own work, whether it's healing or maintaining my own spiritual hygiene. And so I want to be able to introduce these people to you and let you have the opportunity to experience them yourselves and then also ask questions in the chat box. So please, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, put them in the chat box. Our lovely moderator, Kelly, is here again. Um, she does an amazing job monitoring that and interacting with you guys. So let us know if you have any questions. One other quick note is a lot of people, including myself, have been having some technical difficulties on and off. I've asked for a lot of help with that, and hopefully today will be smooth. But if for some reason something happens, we will be back. Don't give up on us. Hang in there. We'll be back. And um, I may even on occasion just turn off my video and let Justin speak to help with the streaming as well, because I know, Justin, you mentioned that can help sometimes. So yeah. um, just just a little you know, uh, side note there that if you lose us, we'll be back. So. Um, I'm Devin Dewar. I'm your host. I'm an intuition teacher, speaker, and writer, and I'm also a trained animal communicator and angel communicator. I've studied different healing modalities. I became a Reiki master, master, and I also have studied the scalar wave method, as well as tapping, emotional freedom technique, which is what we are going to be talking about today. Um, we will be doing a little bit of tapping today, so I really hope you all can tap along with us and um, experience it. But first, I'd like to let Justin introduce himself and um, kind of talk a little bit about how he got into this. So welcome, sure. Justin. Well, yeah, I'm Justin. Thank you so much for having me. And um, you know, I, I'll just tell a little bit of my backstory. So I was always like a math and science person. I grew up in a family of doctors and none of them were really open to any of this kind of energy work or energy stuff. Um, it was always very kind of standard medical type of learning and training. And I always thought I was going to be a doctor. You know, that, that was always my path. And there's a lot of pressure kind of put on me to do that. And I was fine with that because I love math and science. And honestly, like I wasn't intuitive at all. I didn't have any kind of like crazy, or interesting intuitive experiences when I was young, when I was a kid, anything like that. I just was kind of a really normal guy. And um, when I was in college, I had a little bit of a tough time and I went through a little bit of anxiety and a little bit of depression. And I, during that time, my uncle actually, had discovered tapping and he kind of introduced it to me. And honestly, like when I, the first time I saw him doing it, I thought it was kind of like a joke and I kind of made fun <laughs> of him because it was really goofy. Cause you're like banging on your face and your body. And I'm like, this, <laughs> you know, like this is just ridiculous. But um, I watched some tapping videos on YouTube cause I was like kind of interested cause it was, you know, something new, something different. And um, I saw some pretty amazing things in a lot of these videos. I'm like, wow, maybe there is something here. So I did a little bit of tapping on myself for anxiety and I experienced positive results, like significant positive results. So I was kind of like amazed. I'm like, wow, there's actually something here. This is really cool. This is different. This isn't what, you know, in my realm. So I did it a little bit um, and then I kind of put it in my back pocket and I kind of just, you know, went on my way. Just, and then um, I decided not to go to medical school after college because it, it kind of just didn't feel right for me. And I didn't really know why, but it just wasn't, I just wasn't feeling like that's what I wanted to do. So I went into real estate um, and just did something completely different for a few years and just kind of was doing, being a real estate agent, just doing my thing. And then I kind of started getting pulled back into some of this tapping stuff. And I started remembering and kind of like researching it again. And um, I decided to become certified as a tapper and to really learn it and get some formal training in it. And I ended up meeting my mentor, Karen Davidson, who is a master EFT trainer, but she also is incredibly intuitive and has all these like mind blowing intuitive skills that she incorporates into her healing, which I didn't have any of, but I thought it was cool. And I was wondering like, you know, cause I know that she was born with it. She was born with all of these skills, just kind of from day one, she had all these amazing intuitive abilities. And I'm like, hey, like, is this something that 
I could learn, like, can you teach this or do you just have to be born with it? She's actually like, no, you actually can learn this, even if you've never been intuitive at all. And I'm like, well, then I want to learn. So <laughs> please teach me everything you can. So I started mentoring with her every week. And I've done that for about five or six years now. And in addition to building up my knowledge around tapping, I kind of started opening up all these different crazy, strange, intuitive abilities that um, in some ways are really weird and out there, but in some ways they're just kind of, it's just kind of what I do now. And I, and I don't consider myself like, you know, kind of like a super woo woo crazy person or anything like that. You know, I, I think I'm very grounded. I'm still just like a normal guy. You know, I still have a pretty normal type of life, but I also incorporate some of these things. Um, so, you know, I'm continuing to learn and develop and, and I continue to use tapping. And I think it's, it's just this like amazing, amazing tool that I love so, so much. And it's helped me through a lot of my own challenges in my own life that have come up, you know, since I learned it and since I was trained in it, things that, you know, have just been very painful, very difficult and tapping has, has really helped me through it. Oh, that's, I mean, I love that you just said, because I, I tell my clients this a lot, that it opened up intuitive channels for you, because a lot of people, because that's how I got into teaching, was people would say, I can't do that. And I knew from experience that you could open up these channels, and this was a really unique way of doing it. Now, I learned train tapping through my animal communication training and saw the shift happening with the animals. Um, specifically, I used, I grew up riding horses, so um, they're so sensitive and being able to sit there and tap on a horse and then just, you know, feel their bodies relax into it was really significant for me as far as opening up to believing how this could work. So then I started doing it on myself just, um, you know, for different little things, like maybe I felt like I was getting sick. So I was tapping on that I'm healthy and little things like that. But then as I went through other challenges, I found that it could be really helpful to have a customized um, tapping session, which is how I met you. I reached out to you because I wanted to make sure that if I'm, you know, walking my talk, if I'm out here talking to everybody about different ways that we can take, do self-care and take care of ourselves, body, mind, and spirit, keep it balanced. I need to make sure that I'm doing everything that I can. And I teach mm -hmm. journaling and tracking your habits and all kinds of ways for doing that. But I mean, you know, heal or heal thyself, right? So yeah. I, yeah. I, I reached out to Justin and he has really helped me work through some different things. And um, it's kind of amazing the way, you know, I'll feel a, a transformation during the session, but then it kind of stays with me for a while after that shifting, I can feel it, you know? And so it definitely is something that is a lasting effect right? So what are some of the things that people come to you for? Why would somebody need tapping? You know, you mentioned anxiety. What are some other things that people can tap for? Sure. Really any negative emotion, anxiety, grief, depression, anger, shame, guilt, jealousy, you know, really any negative emotion, um, boredom, even, you know, you're super, super bored. You can, any negative emotion you can tap on and it can help you feel better. And at least in my understanding, the reason is that when we have a negative emotion, it's because our energy isn't flowing. We're not flowing, we're not in flow, right? And something's stuck. And tapping is a way to push that stuck energy back into flow, to help it kind of resolve and release so you can start flowing again, and it's all just based on ancient Chinese medicine. Um, it's just based on acupuncture theory that there's channels of energy, just like we have blood vessels or vessels for lymph that go through our system, there's channels of energy. And with tapping, you're just getting the energy to flow again. So really any negative emotion that you can imagine, you can tap on and you can feel better very, very quickly. It's crazy how fast it works, it really is. 
And correct me if I'm wrong, but it's you're not just tapping away the emotions you don't want, but you also are tapping in emotions you do want, correct? Yes, you absolutely can also tap in to strengthen and bring in positive emotions that you're looking to feel, you know, like joy and happiness and all and peace, serenity, all these different things. You can also bring those in and kind of strengthen those in your system as well. So, cause I'm always talking to my clients about um, strengthening their intuitive muscle. So mm -hmm. I know for me, I, what was helpful to tap, work on tapping that was positive was confidence and trust in myself. And especially if I knew I was, you know, when I first started working with clients and was just getting a little bit of jitters, you know, performance mm -hmm. jitters, um, I, I would tap on confidence, you know, I would tap on um, that I have the wisdom, you know, just affirming things like that. So do you wanna talk a little bit about uh, affirmations and, and the intention behind all of this? Sure, yeah. So uh, I think intentions, go with tapping very, very well. And it's kind of just like, we're using our, all of our kind of like free will to just choose and create something. And when we set an intention, we create a really powerful energy field. And that energy field helps us with whatever we're trying to do. And it also kind of goes out from us in every direction. And it interacts with other people's energy fields, helping to set up positive interactions and facilitate things that we're trying to accomplish. And, you know, with intention, it's something that I was first introduced to through the film, The Secret, which came out like way back in the early 2000s, which I think a lot of people did see. And it was kind of like a very limited, you know, presentation perspective of intentions. And I kind of played with it a little bit and I didn't get any success or any results. I'm like, this doesn't work. I'm done with this, I'm not doing it anymore, you know? So I just kind of pushed it away. And then fairly recently, I kind of started to get back into it a little bit. And I realized that I wasn't doing it correctly, I guess you could say. I wasn't doing it in an ideal way to create powerful intentional fields and energy fields. Um, I was kind of like thinking it, you know, and sometimes I would do the affirmations where I would just kind of repeat something, over and over to myself, but I didn't have the feeling behind it that I needed. And what I've since learned is that it's really important to feel very strongly when you're doing intentions to create that powerful field. You need strong thought, but you also need strong feeling. And I think the best way is to feel as if your intention was already accomplished. If you're at the finish line of your goal, how wonderful would you feel, how amazing, how joyful would you feel if you had already accomplished this thing that you really, really want to accomplish? And you feel that as you set the intention, it creates this really powerful energy field. And, you know, I, I set intentions for, for sessions that I do. I set, in, I set intentions for larger goals and things I'm trying to accomplish. I set intentions for all different types of things. And I think it's, it's just been so powerful and so, and so cool and is really, kind of like sped everything up for me. Um, it's, it's, been, it's been awesome, so yeah. Well, I wanted to ask you, you mentioned about how it affects your energy field and other energy fields. So does that mean like even with relationships, like work relationships, spousal relationships, children? Absolutely, yes. I think all relationships, because everyone has an energy field. And when you're projecting a really powerful energy field of some intention, it interacts with other people's energy fields and it helps to facilitate positive interactions, which I assume, you know, when you set intentions, you're setting for positive interactions and not for negative interactions. So it helps create positive interactions with wh whoever it is, you know, people at work, people you're living with, potential clients, your friends, really anybody. And, yeah, it's, and it's amazing. In your animals, because that's what how I learned it with your animals. And then I even took it further and sometimes would do it uh, like a relationship with your home. So sometimes people feel resistance in selling a home or buying a home, or even maybe it's a second home that they need to take care of. And they, they go out there feeling like it's a burden, you know, and, and shifting that perspective. So sometimes it's about shifting perspective too, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. I think we're, I think we're all so much more powerful than we realize, than we understand. 
And I think a lot of people are, you know, beginning to wake up to that. I mean, I know I certainly am. And it's a really fun, cool process and experience. And it, it doesn't mean you have to stop being you. You know, you can yeah. still just be your normal self. You don't have to completely change or anything like that or, st- or let go of your beliefs or anything like that. You can still just be you, you know, your normal self, but also incorporate some of these really cool things too. Well, that gives me another question. Um, I learned from my, my animal communication teacher, Joan Ranquit, and she talks about you're not just tapping from your perspective, you, you also tap from the animal's perspective. So do you ever do that? Uh, do you tap, if, like if it was a relationship or maybe something like, when I did it, I tapped from the house's perspective too, which sounds a little out there, but just you know, helping you shift the perspective kind of helps with the narrative. Do you ever do that, like tap from someone else's perspective? So I think that it definitely is something that you can do. And I do do it you know, from time to time. I think it can really help shift and open up the stuck energy, you know, and, and again, it's, it's your energy, but it's also your mind and your neural pathways and your beliefs and how you kind of see things that can keep you trapped in different ways or stuck in certain patterns. And I think being able to step outside a little bit of your, of your kind of your mental patterning and your mental programming is so super, super helpful if you're trying to make a major shift around something. And I think tapping from a different perspective is like an amazing way, amazing way to do that. Oh, wow, that's so neat. Well, can you share some of your favorite or one or just one if you have one, but like transformations that you've witnessed in doing this work? Yeah, absolutely. Um, You know, for, if we're just talking about tapping, then I have, there was a client that I worked with who was agoraphobic, uh, which basically means too scared to even really leave the house. Um, And just leaving the house to come to my office was like the most difficult thing for him, really. And his anxiety was just so jacked up. We're talking like 10 out of 10 all the time, couldn't function, couldn't do anything really. And it was just, it was heartbreaking for this poor guy. Um, and he tried different stuff, but he didn't know what to do or how to, how to fix it, you know, cause our feelings, you know, sometimes we like to think that we have control over our feelings, but sometimes our feelings really kind of get out of control and we don't want that to happen. But sometimes it's very difficult to like stop that if it starts spiraling. And that's what happened to this poor kid, you know, he just spiraled and spiraled and then he just became really stuck. So we came into my office and we started tapping on the anxiety. And with tapping, we sometimes can just do standard tapping on a feeling, like we'll pick a feeling anxiety, right? And what we usually do is we try to quantify it. So how intense is it on a scale of zero to 10? And the reason we do that is because if we do tapping and then we check on the feeling, we can see in real time if it shifted and kind of give it it's a really useful way to measure to see what the shifts are that we've made. So his anxiety was just a 10 out of 10. And we started just by tapping directly on the anxiety and it wasn't changing yet. It wasn't shifting because he was so blocked in so many different ways. So what, when something isn't shifting immediately with tapping, usually there's some kind of limiting belief or blocking belief that is interfering with that, right? That's like, it's holding it in place. So you have to tap on the limiting belief first. And for him, there are several different ones. The biggest one was he believed that it just was not possible for him to get over this anxiety. He had it for a long time and it just dominated his life. And he just didn't think it was possible for it to get better. So we tapped on the belief that I believe, even though I believe it's not possible, you know, and we do the the thing that you say when you do tapping, which is though, even though I believe this, I completely accept myself. And we did that for a while. And then we started tapping on the anxiety again. And it started like coming down significantly. And like his eyes were just like going wide because he like couldn't believe it. He was like so shocked about it. Um, So we kept working through different limiting beliefs and kept getting it down and down. And by the end of the session, we got his anxiety all the way down to a zero. And he was like in complete shock and amazement because he hadn't felt that way in years and years. And he was just like so happy and so grateful and it was just so, so exciting for him. Um, And I I remember that experience very vividly because that was one of my earlier experiences Mm -hmm. doing tapping actually. 
and it it was incredible and i and you know both my parents are are psychiatrists so therapists in a lot of ways and i always thought i would be a therapist and i don't know if through just traditional talk therapy you could make such a sudden shift in your emotional state for someone who was so stuck so it was it was just eye opening and and really cool and amazing to see Wow, that is a wonderful story. And it um, brings up the question about people who suffer from chronic pain. So is this something that people will use tapping for as well? Because I know that sometimes medications just don't go far enough, right? Yeah. So chronic pain, you can definitely tap on because one, at least in my experience of what I've been taught is that you can, whatever your pain is, if you are stressed out about your pain, if you feel bad about your pain, it can actually make your experience of the pain so much worse than it would be without the negative emotions kind of surrounding it. And you can tap on all the negative emotions around it and you can experience like amazing reductions in the pain right in the moment. I think it's hugely useful and hugely beneficial for chronic pain. And you know, I think a lot of chronic pain can actually be rooted in a lot of deep stuck emotional stuff. So I think there's just tapping on how you're feeling about it to get it down in the moment. But I also think that if you tap on some of the root emotional causes, you can shift, you know, the pain in a more kind of long-term way. So you don't have to kind of keep tapping it down, but I think it's enormously helpful and beneficial for, for chronic pain. Yeah, that's a great um, explanation of it. Um, it kind of makes, I, I think that maybe it's beneficial here to talk a little bit about the seven energy bodies. Now, I know that that's something that's a little out there for some people, maybe people haven't even heard of it and it can sure. even probably be its own other episode. <laughs> I mean, there's so much that goes into it, right? Yeah. But you did mention how sometimes um, if there's something else emotionally going on that could be causing the chronic pain. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a great point to bring up is, can you talk a little bit about the seven energy bodies and how you use them with your clients? Sure. Yeah. And, and it is kind of out there and kind of weird, you know, even for me, um, <laughs> but it is something that I've learned about. And I think it's the best way to describe it is that we have an energy system that interacts with our physical energy body. Right, um, and there are actually certain instruments that can measure the energy field that you give off. And our energy field is is like Russian nest dolls, where you have one, you take the top off, and there's another inside, and you take the top off, and they're kind of all nested in each other. That's exactly like what the energy bodies are like. So there's the physical energy body, and then a little bit further out, there's the emotional energy body, which is just like uh, energy body does the same shape as your body, but it's just a little bit outside of it. Then there's the mental energy body, then the intuitive energy body, the causal bodies and the soul body. And all of these are kind of like stacked like this. And in each different body, we can get stuck energy, you know, and what is stuck energy? It's usually some kind of residual emotion. Um, it's usually some kind of limiting belief, or it's a non-beneficial thought. Now, non-beneficial thoughts don't usually get stuck. Um, it's usually if you're thinking the same thing over and over again for like years. Like if you're thinking like, I'm not deserving or something like that over and over every day for years and that can get stuck. But usually like, you know, cause we all think negative thoughts occasionally and they don't usually get stuck, but every now and then it does happen. But it's a lot of res just residual unprocessed emotions and limiting beliefs of different kinds. And those are kind of, they get kind of lodged in our system, you know, we all have stuff, right? And that's really all it is, it's just stuff. We all have stuff inside that affects us and we all know that, you know, and it gets triggered and it causes us to react in ways that we don't always want to, but sometimes we just can't help it, you know? And it's just like, oh, like I just have this stuff and it's causing me to act this way. And it's almost like we have like a septic tank that just gets filled more and more as we just move through our lives, you know, with all the stuff that happens because life can be very difficult. And often we, in our society, in our culture, it's not necessarily encouraged to just process and release all of our emotions. You know, sometimes we're kind of just encouraged to stuff it down, push it away, and then it doesn't get released. And then it's just like, it gets, it just builds up and builds up and builds up. And eventually you have enough of that in you 
it starts to overflow in some way. And that can be in an anxiety or depression kind of thing. It can be in a physical ailment or a chronic physical disease. You know, if, if we've just had so much stuff build up, eventually it just goes into the body. And with these energy layers, kind of in case people are interested, kind of how it works, is that as we get stuff stuck in the outer layers, it tends to slowly move into the inner layers and eventually into the physical body. And that's, you know, when we really get into trouble. But if we can just clear and just release some of this stuff, then we can feel a lot better. And then our bodies can be lighter and our energy is flowing and we can, we can, we can just have more health in so many different ways. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things that I learned going through it and just working with other clients is that a lot of times we have stories we tell ourselves and narratives that we get stuck in. And, you know, it it can go back to sometimes the belief system we were raised in, but, you know, and other people told us these things about ourselves and we decided to believe them. Um, But also just this, you know, people will sometimes get stuck in a loop with a story. Mm -hmm. And um, so what you're kind of doing sometimes by working with somebody um, who can customize it to what you're working, going through, I think it can help you change that narrative, right? I mean, you know, so that, you know, you're, you're almost preventing, you know, that thought from coming again more quickly. And then, you know, you go maybe 30 minutes without having that thought, and then you go an hour without having that thought, right? And so you're, you're you're retraining that narrative. Exactly. Yeah, well, we learn through narrative. We form neural pathways and neural networks in our brain through our narrative experiences. So we have all of these neural networks and they get so well-worn that they just fire over and over and over again. The same story we keep telling ourselves and and we get so stuck in that. And the stuff, the energy, it really kind of corresponds to the neural pathways in these networks. And the stuck energy kind of drives the same thoughts over and over and over again. And as you begin to clear and heal and release some of that stuff, then it's it takes all this pressure off the neural networks and they can start to change. And you can start to tell yourself a little bit of a new story, which can be really difficult to do when you have so much of the old energy still there because it just keeps getting triggered and fired off over and over and you're just stuck and you're thinking about it and you're feeling it and it's reinforcing the pathways. And it's just like this cycle that just keeps, you know, looping and looping and looping. And we need to find a way to short circuit that. And, you know, going to the energy, I think is a beautiful way to do that. But also with some of the positive tapping stuff that we were talking about earlier, it helps us to create and lay the groundwork for like a new narrative, a new story we can tell ourselves that isn't kind of so dark and depressing and gloomy, but that is much nicer, you know, about just feeling better and feeling a lot healthier. So, so yeah, I think that the narrative piece is super important. Yeah. And I was all, I mean, so you're tapping on these different points, which we're going to get to some tapping here in a minute and we'll talk and I'll let you talk about the different points, but again, it's these different points where we're moving energy and we're tapping on it. Um, I remember when I was first learning about tapping and I was being led through a series, um, I would be thinking, I'm, I feel fine. I, I don't really need to tap, but I'm learning this, so I'm doing it. And then halfway through, I'm crying. Like, I'm just, tears are just coming out and there's this yeah. relief. And I'm not a crier. It takes a lot to make me cry. So yeah. that was for me was like, oh, wow, this is... And, it was like stuff came up that I didn't even know was there. Exactly. You know, because it yeah. was being allowed to come out and release through that. Um, yes. And it's a safe way. Yeah, well, it's a very safe way. And so, and because of the way our culture and society is, so many of us are kind of blocked with just even acknowledging and getting in touch with some of our stuff, some of our emotions. So as we start tapping, it begins to shift some of the blocks to even just acknowledging that it's there. And as that changes, as that shifts, as that moves, then all of a sudden we can get in touch with some of the unprocessed stuff that we've kind of been ignoring or or shoving down. And then it comes up and we're tapping. So we're already in the perfect place for it to come up because the tapping 
starts to work on it and it starts to help to help shift it. And do you, um, so what you were mentioning earlier about sometimes we can't always feel the, the positive because we have so much to work through, work out of the negative. Does that mean that you don't always necessarily add that component when you're first working with somebody, if, if they're really stuck, or are you just focused on getting that negative out or do you always bring that in? in oh, every sure, no, it's a very good question. I would say that I usually try to bring at least a little bit of it in, even if it's just towards the end. I do think that it's true that if your brain is so locked up in a negative story and there's so much stuck energy kind of driving that story to just keep replaying over and over again, that if you start out with some positive stuff, you kind of, it'll just, you'll just reject it. You know, you'll just push it away. You won't be able to accept it and integrate it. Um, but I do try at least for people who are really stuck, at least at the towards the end of the session to bring in a little bit of, you know, positive stuff and some positive reframing. But um, with tapping, just the thing that we always say, which is whatever I'm experiencing, I completely accept myself, is a way of bringing some positivity in, which we always do, even if it's just acceptance. And the truth is for a lot of people who are very, very stuck, even if they just say, I accept myself. There's a part of them that says, no, you don't, or no, I don't, you know, that just fights it and pushes against it. Um, so sometimes we'll have to say, I'm open to the possibility of accepting myself someday or something like that. to at least to get them to the point where they're like, okay, maybe I can sort of consider that. But I do try to introduce it when I can. And, and for some people, depending on where they are in their system, you know, I can bring it in sooner. Um, it, it's kind of a very individualized thing based on if I feel that they can integrate it and it would be a good time to bring it up. Yeah, because going back to what you said about the intention behind it, you know, what you're doing is you're opening, opening. I mean, e like anything that I do with what I teach, I feel like that's kind of part of our purpose here anyways, is to open to God's love, to what is available to us, to other people's love. Um, and so this is one of my favorite ways to kind of open channels and like, again, not even know we're closed, but yeah, I can, I mean, I've definitely come across a lot of people and I was like you early on where I was like, I, I don't know if I believe in any of this, you know, a lot of the stuff that I was learning, I'm like, well, you know, I'm not sure how open I am, but there was just a little bit of an opening you know, and mm -hmm. for me personally, like it was because of a couple of in, intuitive experiences I um, encountered myself that I think were the opening for me. Mm -hmm. But again, you know, you said you didn't consider yourself intuitive growing up. Um, you didn't consider yourself to have these abilities natural born, you know, and so I love that this is, this opens up, you know, enormous possibilities for anybody to, um, achieve their dreams, you know, and um, whether you're struggling with, with, you know, this next big work project, or you've got writer's block, or you've got, you know, um, a challenging family situation, and there's a holiday coming up. I mean, I, there's so many ways that tapping can be used. And I also want to bring up because I have two daughters, and I have a lot of friends and clients with kids, that this is such a healthy way to work with your kids, right? Cause they get, they feel all this anxiety too. And they, yeah. they feel the test anxiety or anxiety over something that happened in the cafeteria, you know, or just yeah. well, now in yes. quarantine, mm -hmm. they can't see their friends. Right. Yeah. So there's a, there's a lot of ways that you can use this with um, people in your own home. And again, like I said, I learned it with animals and um, animals get anxious. So, you know, and sometimes it's because they're feeding off of us, but you know, this is another great way that you could open that connection with your animals. So- Yeah, absolutely. Would you Kids like to are go, amazing to work aren't with. They, they shift mean, so fast. And they're so open, because they're so open, right? Yes. They haven't been shut down layer by layer. Exactly. Through different traumas and just encounters with people telling them who they are, you know? Yeah, they're so, so open and they, tend to shift so fast. It's amazing. It's so fun to work with kids and it's wonderful to see and watch and, oh, and they, love, they love it. I mean, at least the ones I've worked with, they seem to really love it. 
Yeah, that's wonderful. Well, would you like to go ahead and talk about the points so that we could, we're going to tap on anxiety, correct, today? Sure. Yeah, okay. that's what I was thinking. Well, just because what everyone's going through right now with COVID, I think we're all kind of feeling squeezed. Yeah. And I want to point out again that, you know, we're going to do some tapping right now that'll just help everybody. And, um, you know, going through the points um, alone will help me sometimes, you know, if I don't have time to really go through the narrative. Mm -hmm. But um, I, you know, I encourage you that if there's something that you want to work on, that it, it is so beneficial to work with somebody, um, a, a trained practitioner, because, you can then be in the moment and be present for it and feel the opening more, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I think also sometimes it's it's hard to, even for me, for my own stuff, I think it can be very difficult to really know what I need to work on, what's going on under the surface. You know, it's kind of like when you're inside the jar, it's hard to read the label. And when you're just stuck in all your own stuff, it's hard to really have that outside perspective. So I think for anybody, you know, working with another person can be helpful. That's a great analogy. Yes. Um, and I just want to remind everybody who's watching that if you have any questions, please go ahead and put them in the chat box. We're going to go through the points and then I'll make sure if, if anybody has any questions about that before we get started, I'll, I'll address them. And then also we can, um, we'll answer questions afterwards as well. So would you like to talk about the points? Yeah. So uh, what I want to say too is just that when we're tapping, it's really important to focus on what we're tapping on. So if we're tapping on anxiety, it's you want to try to focus and feel and bring that anxiety to the surface. Because as you bring your attention to it, it kind of brings it to the surface. And then the tapping is a lot more effective. So whenever, whatever we're working on, we want to be focused on the negative feeling. That is number one. That's very, very important. So now these are all just acupuncture points that we're going to be tapping on. And what we're doing is we're just activating the point. And when you activate the point, it starts to get the energy flowing. And you can activate a point if you're doing acupuncture with a needle um, or with tapping, we just use our fingertips. So it's kind of like acupressure instead of acupuncture, but it's the same exact theory. So uh, the first points that we do are on the right on the beginning of the eyebrow, and there's one on each side of the face. For a lot of these points, there's one on both sides, and you can tap on both sides, or you can just tap on one side. It, at least in my experience, I found that it really, it doesn't matter. So there's points right on the beginning of the eyebrow on both sides, and it doesn't have to be exact. You know, if you're just in the vicinity, usually that's fine. It's a very forgiving process, which is nice. So beginning of the eyebrow, then on the outer eyes, those are the next points then under the eyes, right kind of on that ridge where your eye socket is on that bone right there, then above your lip and below your lip. And then there's two collarbone points, which are here and here. And one really easy way to tap on these, if you just curl your fingers into a C and then tap right at the base of your neck, then you're hitting both of them just like that. Okay. And then there's a point under your arm, which is about two, two and a half inches below your armpit, um, kind of right on the side of your body. And then there's a point on the side of the hand. We call this the karate chop point because we're doing a karate chop. That's where you make contact. It's right on the side of your hand right here. So you just tap right on the side of your hand, just like that. And you know we're hoping that everyone will tap along with us so you all can experience too. And you can pick anything you'd like to work on. If you'd like to work on anxiety, you can. And what I would ask you to do is to whatever feeling you wanna work on, try to quantify it on a scale of zero to 10 to get an intensity, roughly speaking. So you have an idea of how strong it is. And then after we do some tapping, then you can check back in and see if it's gone down, see what the number is, see if it's gone down from like a eight to a seven or a five to a three or something like that. Um, so we can kind of all, all of us can tap together. Okay. Now, what if you wear glasses? Does that matter? Do they have to come off or can you just tap around? So uh, it depends on how, on how big the rims are and how big they are. You know, if you have some really big rim glasses, you might need to take those off. Um, if you have some like, you know, the smaller ones or like the half moon spectacles, you might be able to leave those on, but uh, it kind of depends on the size. Yeah. Okay. And then we're just using the two, two fingers, right? For most. So you can use two fingers. You can use one finger. Usually I use two fingers. Um, but it's really whatever you feel comfortable with. We're just activating the point. Okay. And then I'm going to follow along with your 
in repeating after you, right? So we can, we invite anybody else if they would like to, if they feel comfortable wherever they are um, saying it out loud. Now, if they, if they're, you know, in an office and they can't say it out loud, can they just say it in their mind or can they just listen? They can absolutely say it in their mind. Okay. Yeah, you don't have to say it out loud. And, and when we're tapping on the points, you know, we do sometimes say stuff just to help us stay focused on the emotion. You don't have to, but you know, it's easy for your mind to kind of drift. And then the tapping won't be as effective if you're not focused on it. So as we hit each point, we usually say what we're tapping on because it helps us keep laser focused on that. So whenever we're doing tapping, we always start on the side of the hand right here. Should we just tap on anxiety about COVID? Is that what you were thinking or? Um, well, yeah. I mean, can people decide if they have something else they're anxious about? Can they set that intention? Is of that course. Yeah. But yep. yeah, I mean, maybe I think everybody's having anxiety over when this is going to end, right? Yeah, so maybe absolutely. we can tap on that. That sounds great. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, um, I don't see any questions at the moment. Kelly, was there anything else that we needed to address before we get started with the tapping? I, nope. It doesn't look nope, we're good. We've got questions and tons of them, but we can get to them afterwards. Okay, well, I hope you guys all enjoy following along. I'm going to be following Justin's lead and tapping right with you. Yep. And I want to warn you, we are going to look goofy. That's part of the fun of this. So we just, we kind of just accept it. It is a strange, it's a strange thing, but. Um, I learned I had to give up on feeling that way or looking that way. It didn't oh, a while ago in order to get <laughs> to my purpose. So it's like, it is what it is. Yeah, <laughs> so. exactly. Uh, yeah. And the last thing I do want to mention, which I think is really important, is that it's really important to be hydrated when you're tapping. And the reason is because to get the energy flowing, being hydrated really helps because we're like 78% water or something like that. So energy does flow through water. So if you're not hydrated, then it's, it, it stays stuck more. So, you know, as we're tapping, I'm always encouraging people to drink water. Sounds good. <laughs> I'm ready to go. So let's tap on the side of the hand right here. And I want you to repeat after me. So when we're starting, we always start on the side of the hand. And we always start with a statement of, even though I feel this way, I completely accept myself. So we'll say, even though I'm nervous about when this COVID will end. Even though I'm nervous about when this COVID will end. I completely accept myself. I completely accept myself. Even though I'm nervous about when this COVID will end. Even though I'm nervous about when this COVID will end. I completely accept myself. I completely accept myself. Okay, so then we'll start tapping on the beginning of the eyebrows. I'm nervous about when this will end. I'm nervous about when this will end. We can riff a little bit here. So we'll say, hopefully it will end soon. Hopefully it will end soon. But people are saying different things. But people are saying different things. And there's a lot of confusion around it. And there's a lot of confusion around it. And that's scary. And that's scary. And I feel anxious about it. And I feel anxious about it. Anxious about when COVID will end. Anxious about when COVID will end. Okay, so that's one round. So now everyone can have a sip of water if, if you have water with you, and if not, that's okay too. And then do you want to do one more quick round? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So we'll tap on the side of the hand again. Even though I'm still nervous about when COVID will end. Even though I'm still nervous about when COVID will end. I completely accept myself. I completely accept myself. Even though I'm still nervous about when COVID will end. Even though I'm still nervous about when COVID will end. I completely accept myself. I completely accept myself. I'm nervous about when COVID will end. I'm nervous about when COVID will end. People are saying different things. People are saying different things. There's conflicting reports out there. There's conflicting reports out there. It's enough to make anyone crazy. It's enough to make anyone crazy. And I feel anxious about it. And I feel anxious about it. It's a scary situation. It's a scary situation. And it makes me very nervous. And it makes me very nervous. All right. So that's two simple, easy rounds. And as you can see, it's very fast. 
It's very easy and it may look goofy, but it works. So it's worth it. Absolutely. Yes. And I, I know that from my sessions working with you that we often will work tap other points as well, right? Depending on what's needed, where yep. the energy needs to be shifted, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. There's a lot of different points we can tap on. There's some on the fingers, there's other ones on the head, other ones on the torso. Um, those are kind of the basic simplest points, but there are a lot of kind of ones we can add in depending on what we're working on and all of that. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. That was really great. Um, so Kelly, we have some questions you said, would you like to just read them to us or, um, what's easier for you? Sure. Um, the first question is in the, in the tapping exercise that we just did, you did not state an affirmation at the end, like, but I'm going to be okay. So you don't have to do that. You just are feeling into the emotion. So the when we started with the side of the hand we said even though i feel this way i accept myself now we now you're right we didn't end with an i'm going to be okay um now if i was working with a client one-on-one -on -one, usually we would go through at least 10 sometimes more rounds of tapping and then usually one of the later rounds we would kind of tap on but i feel okay i'm going to be okay you know i'm going to get through this you know i don't have to worry things are going to work out everything's gonna be okay type of thing. Um, but since we just did two and we were just focusing on the negative, um, we didn't kind of bring in that positive, but it is important to note that even if you don't bring in a specific positive, you're still gonna feel better because if your anxiety is like an eight out of 10 and you tap it down a little bit and it gets down to like a five out of 10, you're still gonna feel better even though you didn't kind of insert any specific positive stuff. That's a um, really good question. That's great. So Donna is asking if you would please repeat the name of your mentor. She was eager to hear. Uh, oh yeah, it was. sure. So her name is Karin, um, which is K-A-R-I-N Davidson, which is Davidson with an O. So D-A-V-I-D-S-O-N. Thank you for that. Um, we have another question. Have you had positive effects using tapping for patients who have psychiatric issues versus psychological issues? So when you say psychiatric issues, do you mean like some of the more kind of severe disorders like bipolar or um, borderline or things of that nature, I'm assuming? Yes, um, yes, very much so. So generally speaking, the more severe the issue is, so obviously, you know, if you're bipolar or if you're schizophrenic, for instance, the more dense stuck energy you have in your system and kind of the deeper it is. And what I would say is that I have definitely had positive results just using tapping with helping people with really intense and severe psychiatric disorders kind of improve and get through whatever situation they're in. In terms of making massive shifts so they are like completely no longer dealing with any of the bipolar symptoms or any other type of thing. I have found that bringing in some more advanced energy healing techniques can be really helpful um, just because it, it can be so deep and so dense. And sometimes like the energy can almost be like, you know, if you have just layer upon layer, the stuff at the bottom has like all this weight on top of it. And it's like this ball that gets like cemented and hardened and you have, it can be really difficult to kind of pull it apart. And sometimes to get to the really deep core stuff, I think some of there's other energy techniques that I prefer to use for that, but I definitely think tapping is a helpful tool. I, I wouldn't say that I've, you know, cured anyone of bipolar or schizophrenia or anything like that, you know, just using tapping. Um, but I do think it's a really, helpful tool in helping them at least manage it. So when you are working with a client with that kind of <clears throat> deep, uh, those kinds of issues, are you able to either can work with them at a deeper level or refer them on? Can you figure out what they might want to do next? Is that something you can work with people on? So yes, I do work with people who have um, really intense psychiatric issues. 
And um, some of them, depending on the person, a lot of the ones I work with do also see a psychiatrist and some of them also see a traditional therapist. So they have kind of a treatment team. Um, and I do a lot of kind of more advanced energy healing type of techniques to try to get to some of the deepest um, stuck energies. But it is, it is something that I work with and that I have gotten results with. And I think there's a lot of hope no matter no matter how intense or severe your ailment or illness is, I think there's a lot of hope for symptom relief and symptom improvement. And this is the last question that we have so far, but if we, have, if we still have time, if somebody wants to ask one, but this is the last question I see here. And that is, do you use tapping as a primary modality or do you use it as an ad adjunctive one? I would say that for years, I used it as my primary modality um, because it was the main thing that I was certified in and that I understood. And now I use it a little bit more as an adjunctive one. Um, and I do focus on some other types of energy modalities um, that I use a little bit more often than tapping, but I still bring it in all the time. And for my own healing work, um, it is one of the things that I do the most on myself because I think for self healing and self work is still one of the best things that I've ever found. Those are all the questions we have right now. Um, I'm getting ready in the quest in the chat box on YouTube to put your information, Justin. So if you want to talk anything about it, uh, here we go. And if you want to talk about how people can reach you. Sure, yeah. So um, I do individual sessions and my website for that is www.tapintothelight.com. Um, if you're interested in booking any kind of individual session with me, you can definitely go there. Now I also do group sessions um, where I work with my mentor, Karen Davidson, and we work together on a group of up to eight people sometimes. And if you're interested in learning about the group sessions or signing up for a group session, um, there's a different website, which is www.intensivehealingwork.com. And Justin, I did want have a question, one more question for you. I meant to ask you earlier is, sure. um, I always like to ask everybody I have on here, what other things they do for self-care? So obviously you brought up that your main thing that you do for yourself is tapping. Do you have anything else that you'll try out or um, bring into your routine? Yeah, so um, I, I try to do different types of meditation because um, I do find that that really helps calm and quiet my mind and kind of connecting to something bigger than myself, you know, whatever that is. Um, I do try to do that as well. And one of the things that I've discovered a little bit more recently is earthing, um, like earth, which is earth, I-N-G, earthing, earthing.com, which is basically the powerful effects of being connected to the ground, to the earth in some way, and how it can be incredibly healing and amazing, amazing, amazing for pain relief. Um, just really, really briefly, my understanding is that the earth's surface is negatively charged because lightning bolts are constantly hitting it. And when we have inflammation in our body, a lot of free radicals get produced, which are unpaired electrons looking for another electron. So when we're connected to the ground, electrons are flowing up into our system and pairing all those unpaired free radicals. And it helps bring inflammation down really quickly. And inflammation seems to be, seems to contribute to a lot of different things, including emotional stuff, you know, not just physical stuff. So earthing.com, they sell these mats and these sheets and these blankets that you plug into the grounding port. So for the three pronged outlet, it's the bottom one, the grounding port. You plug it right into there and then you put your feet on it or you lie on a sheet and it's basically like you're connected to the earth. Um, and that's something that I've incorporated in that I found to be enormously beneficial. What is the, what is the uh, first thing you noticed when you started doing it as far as a change for you? So um, I had a bout of sciatica recently. And when I started incorporating that in, I noticed a like huge, huge 
pain reduction for that to the extent where, you know, I have a sheet on my bed and I'd be lying on it and I would roll off of it. And all of a sudden, like the pain would start coming back. I roll back onto it and it would go away. Like it was amazing. And there's this really, I believe there's a video on YouTube about it now that I watched that was really cool. But it's just like this really, it's so easy, which is why I love it because you don't actually have to do anything. You just plug it in and you just line it, you put your feet on it, you know, when you're working. And um, it, it is really beneficial. That is so funny. I love the way what comes out of these chats because I actually deal with bouts of sciatica as well. So from an old injury. So I'm definitely going to look into that. I'd never heard of that before. So thank you yeah. so much for sharing that. I will definitely look into that. I've heard of, I know for me personally, um, I, I used to get to go to the beach a lot uh, every summer where my grandmother lived up on in Long Beach Island, New Jersey. And I remember I would like hug the beach. I would lay flat on my on my beach towel and just soak it in because every year I would come back and just get my fix of the ocean and the beach on Long Beach Island and of course got to see very dear family and friends there as well but I so remember especially if I was going through any kind of challenging time the the healing feeling of just being flat yeah. on the earth like that and connected yeah. so it's this amazing. is I guess a way to boost that and help you feel more connected and you know absolutely like you do it. so that yeah, is so it's exactly like that it's amazing yeah well thank you so much Justin um okay so again uh you have a book coming out um what is the name of your book so the name of my book is shift happens I love it <laughs> That's a and point. you know it's basically my story of how I went from just being a real estate agent to being able to kind of see and feel energy and do all these different energy techniques and kind of like, you know, all these, these steps that I had to, in this path that I took and, you know, all these bumps along the road that I didn't know about and they kind of came out of nowhere and like, you know, so it's kind of just like a narrative tale of of how I went from here to here. And my mentor kind of writes from her perspective, you know, like describing something that I was going through, describing how she helped me through it and kind of like how other people can get through it. It's kind of like, so people can see my experience and realize that it's doable. You know, it's, it's something that any normal person can do. And also what, uh, what mistakes you can avoid, you know, learn from my, from my mistakes kind of thing. Okay, so have, you're co-writing that. Oh, okay. I just wanted to first use it. You're co-writing that with your mentor, Karen Davidson. Yes. Yeah. And it's called Shift Happens. Yes. That I'm going to be looking for that. That's exciting. Um, Kelly, you said that there's another question. Uh, yes. Uh, Ruby is asking if earthing would be the same as walking barefoot on the grass. I wanted to get that in before we before you yeah. hop off. Sure. It is the exact same exact same it's the exact same as standing barefoot um on the earth okay we have one more question and that's from donna and i want to know too justin do you consider yourself an intuitive now because if the answer is yes you're giving hope to all of us i consider myself extremely intuitive now um i can really when i work with a client i can really see and feel their energy system and where the pockets of density are, um, even if they're really deep. And that's not something that I could do or even come close to doing. Uh, but anyone can learn how to do that, you know, and there's so many other intuitive things that I do as well that I'll be talking about in my book. But yeah, anyone, anybody can learn this type of stuff. Absolutely. Can we pre-order your book? <laughs> <laughs> so not quite yet um hopefully in the near future though hopefully in the near future well and, and donna and kelly i can tell you from my own experience working with justin that yes he is highly intuitive and you know he's up in connecticut i'm down here in san antonio and he picks up on things that there's no way he could know so it's it's just so fascinating to do this work and um to meet other healers like you, Justin, and I'm just so grateful that I was guided to meet you. Um, so again, your website is, can you say your website one more time? So tapintothelight.com. 
Okay, so if you want to reach out to Justin, you can do that. And you said you are currently doing a promotion for your intake sessions, right? Yes. Yeah. You know, with with everything going on with COVID and all that, you know, I know so many people are financially struggling. So um, I usually my intake session is more expensive than the follow ups. But right now I'm doing a promotion where the intake is the same price as the regular sessions. Great. Well, so people can find you at your website. And then of course, we'll be looking for your book. And then I will be putting the links to all that um, in the descriptions of this uh, video as well. So uh, Justin, I can't thank you enough for doing this. This was wonderful. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I, I hope people found this beneficial. Um, and I, I really enjoy talking about this type of stuff. So thank you again. It was it was a lot of fun. Yeah, thank you so much. And thank you to everybody out there who is watching or will continue to watch. Um, I just want to remind you that, that I do have some more Devin's chats coming up. So if you'll um, please subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell, that will notify you um, when we have more coming up. And we've had several episodes already. So if you'd like to check those out, please do. And um, we do have somebody scheduled for next week and the week after, which will be wrapping up this season. So, um, but please feel free to reach out to Justin or myself. Um, we love connecting with you and I'm so grateful that you were able to join us here live. So thank you again. And um, thanks again, Justin. So we'll see you next time on Devin's chat. Sounds Bye. good. Bye-bye.